Hey everybody and welcome back to Mission Control for your future focus video. In this video we're going to talk about Timeline and an overview of its interface. Timelines allow you to create a precisely timed sequence which you can either run from the console's internal timer or synchronize to an external time code source. This can be useful for opening sequence for a corporate event, a complex song in a show where the song is pre-recorded or run to a click track or time code, or multimedia event run to a playback track. Timelines are stored on a handle using the record button in a similar way to a queue or queue list. They can be built either from playbacks you already have recorded or recording new playbacks as you go along. So the first section in our overview of the timeline will be the overview bar when it zoom controls. Let's take a look at that on the console. Sarah Ham on version 15 of Titan on the Titan Go interface with a little timeline recorded in its view open. So there at the bottom, we can see we've got our uh, overview bar. We can make this bigger or smaller as we wish and basically zoom in and then scroll along. Or we can make it show us larger time frame or fit the entire thing at once. Down at the bottom left of our time code window, we have the Link Unlink button, the Select tool, the Pan tool, and the Add Item menu. So let's take a look at that. See here, we've got our Link button to turn to link the time code on or off. We've got our Selection tool, or our Pan tool, which basically just allows us to move along in our timeline with our mouse cursor or our finger if we were using a touch screen. And our Plus button to add an item. Here's our add item menu. We see here we can add a blank track, add a marker, add a new playback or an existing one. We set a level of playback. We go to the queue of a queue list. We can flash a playback. We can swap a playback. We can pre a playback. This is equivalent of a move in dark. We can also wait for go, which is basically pausing the timeline. So if we use the internal timer, you can have it stop and wait for you to hit the go button to continue moving on. Let's take a look at that. So if we go ahead and click our plus button here, we see here we can add a new track to our cue list. We can add a new marker. We can add a, they set the new playback, an existing one. We can set the level. We can go to a particular queue. We can preload again, the same as moving dark. We can flash swap or wait for go. Then on the left hand side of the window, we have our tracks. We can see the cues in the track. We can collapse the track. We can see its legend and its halo if it has any. Uh, we can lock the track to disable it from being edited. We can enable or disable the track to have it run or not during our timeline. We also have the arrows to move our selection from the different end points and start points of the queue in question. So let's take a look at that. So here we can see we've got the tracks here and I've got two different tracks. And I can see that they uh, see the queues that are in them and I can use the arrow buttons to just move to and from the different selection points of that tracks being played. I can lock the track. This will prevent it from being edited. So if I tried to select something in here, I can't do it. We can also turn it off. So with this here, the all of these cues would not play during our timeline because it's turned off. We can enable it again by turning it back on. We can collapse the track so we can see more of it in the window without having to scroll. So we can do uh, the half point or the full collapse. And the background is showing it full. In the main section of our timeline, we have the following items. We have the time code at the top, which shows the time uh, that it is at. We have our playback fade in and fade outs. We have a, we can see we have a track that's been swapped. We have a, a one with a selected ends. We see a flash, and we also see the cursor. So let's take a look at that. So here we can see our tracks fading in and fading out. We see here's one that I've flashed. Here's one that I've swapped. Here's a key list with its hitting the go buttons on it. And our blue line is our cursor, so what our current time code is at. We can see that here. Time code source, as with regular time coding, timelines can use any of the time code windows and sources. This will be set in the timeline options. If using WinApp or internal time code, you can start and stop the time code clock from the timeline view. All those are controlled externally. If disabled, the time code will be shown in red. In our top example, we would see if we were using WinApp or Internal time code, we can rewind the time code to zero. We can play from the current cursor's location. We can pause and play it. We can stop 
or enter the live record mode. We can also see what the frames per second are from our time code source and as well as its current time. Down below would be like if we were using SMTPE uh, or if we had it set to disabled, it would look like that. So let's take a look at that. So in our upper left corner, we've got all the time code here. We can see that uh, we have our reset, our play from marker, we pause it here, and then hit here, we just start from over again. Oh, we can stop it, and we can enter our live record mode. If we were to change our time code source from internal to, say, SMPTE, we can see that it's, it's here. If we were to set it to disabled instead of enabled, we'll see that the time code turns red on any of it, so we know that our time code is disabled and therefore would not run. In the Timeline Views context menu, we have additional options and tools. Remember that your context menu on the Titan Go, Sapphire Touch, and D9s will be the four lines button. On all the other consoles, it's going to be left of the soft keys uh, B, C, and D, as we see circled here. So in our context menu, we have the ability to open the table view. We can enable or disable controlling of the view with the wheels. We can have it select cursor, fit the selected trick to the view. Set it between Tool Select and Pan. We can open the Tools menu, the Snaps Options menu, or clear our selection. If we went into our Tools menu, we can simplify the trigger triggers. We can smooth selected triggers. We can import markers, crop start times to our triggers, crop our duration to the total triggers, and close the Tools menu. So again, our, four, our context menu on the Titan Go software is going to be the Four Lines button. And we see here we can open our table view, we can set our wheels to control our timeline. You can now see we have cursor position on our wheels, so if we change that we can see we can move our cursor's position. We have it be select cursor or not with our wheels. So now with our wheels set to this we can move our time over and we can vertically scroll it up and down. We can also zoom in and zoom out on our view. So if using your fingers is a pain on your touch screen, you can just set it to be your wheels and use it. Continuing on in our context menu, we have fit to view. So if we did this, if we were to select our track here and then hit fit to view, we can see that it puts all of the cues in this track in the view to be seen. We can set it to our pan tool or our select tool, same as using the buttons down here. If we go ahead and enter our tools menu, we can see here we can simplify selected triggers, we could smooth our selected triggers, we could import markers, we could crop our start time or and our end time to our triggers. So if we did this, we can see that it knocks off that first few seconds of blank time I had. And also the trap, crop the endpoint to the end of the triggers. And I can just close the tools menu. We see here in our snap options, when we add a new item, we can have it automatically snap to triggers or to markers or to the cursor. So let's take a look at that. So see here, if we go into our context menu and we go into our, let's take it out of this one. See here, if we go into our context menu and into our snap options, we can turn those on or off and close it. If we were to open our table view, it would look like this. We can see we have our track selection. We can add an item. We can see the cues, the action that is being performed, the value of the action, where the cursor is, and if it looks like a swap playback or a flash. So let's take a look at that. So we go in our context menu and go ahead and open up our table view. We can see here. We have all of our cues as well as our track here. We can see that what the time is, which track it's in, and what happens. In this case, it's a flash of the blinders. It's on here. And then you can see that here it goes off at this time code value. We can also filter it to show just the markers, which you don't have any in this particular one, or track one, or just track two. So if you like more looking at the spreadsheet, you can use this way. We can also set the legend of a track. We can set its name to be more descriptive than the track one, two, three. We can also set its halo and display color. 
So let's take a look at that. So if we go ahead and hit Set Legend and then choose one of our tracks, we'll go ahead and select Track 2 here. And since I have all my blinders in my Track 2, I'm just going to set it as blinders instead of Track 2. You can now see that it says blinders. We also change this color. Instead of having the green default, we can have it be something else. So we're going to put our halo and we'll make our blinders have a yellow. So now we see that it puts a yellow halo around it as well as all the rise and falls are in yellow. We can also see on our overview bar, it makes it easier to see uh, which tracks are which. So that's been an overview of Timeline in Titan. Uh, please join us for the rest of our series of videos where we go into more depth into each part as well as recording uh, live and manually creating tracks in our timelines. I hope you learned something. Join us on Facebook at Able Lights US. Join us here next time and please subscribe. Thanks. Bye. We'll stop. Roger, we'll stop Discovery. Welcome back. A great ending to the new beginning.